Hi, welcome to another video in my series on the locus of a complex number z. And in this video, what we're going to look at is this equation here, the arg of z minus z1 all divided by z minus z2 equals theta. Where z1, z2 represent the complex numbers of two fixed points on an argon diagram. And towards the end, what we'll do is we'll have a go at these three questions. In fact, you might like to have a go at them. They show up different ideas on this equation here. So I'd strongly encourage you to have a go at them. But before we start, what we need to do is work out what this locus for z would be that satisfies this equation. And to do that, what you should be familiar with, if you've watched earlier videos in this series, is the rule that if you've got the arg of a fraction, it's the same as the arg of the top minus the arg of the bottom. So I can write this then as the arg of z minus z1 minus the arg of z minus z2 equals theta. And if I let the arg of z minus z1 equal alpha, and the arg of z minus z2 equals beta, then what we've got is that alpha minus beta must equal theta. Now I showed you in an earlier tutorial that the arg of z minus z1 equaling alpha represents a half line starting from this end point here, going up at an angle alpha to the horizontal. And z represents any complex number on this half line. Now similarly, the arg of z minus z2 equaling beta, that represents a half line starting from this end point here and going up an angle beta to the horizontal. Now the complex number z has to lie on both these half lines. So therefore, it must be restricted just to the point of intersection of these two half lines. Now if I draw a horizontal line in here, then because these two lines are parallel, the angle alpha here corresponds to the angle alpha here. And similarly, the angle beta shown here in blue corresponds to this angle shown here in blue, beta. Now, the angle between this line and this line here, this angle in here, is going to now be alpha minus beta, which is exactly the same as the angle between this line here and this one down here. And we know from over here that alpha minus beta equals theta. So this angle then must be theta. Now as angle alpha and beta vary, then the locus of z moves something like this. And what this is, in fact, is the arc of a circle, with the angle theta subtended from the chords at the endpoints of z1 z2. Now this is a standard circle theorem result that hopefully you're familiar with. Now theta is a positive angle and since alpha minus beta equals theta, alpha must always be greater than beta. And that means that we have to travel round in an anti-clockwise sense starting at this point where z1 is and finishing at this point here where z2 is. Now when it comes to sketching the curve, the locus for z, we've got to take some care because the angle theta can be either acute, as you see here, or it can be obtuse. Now if it's acute, we move round as normal in an anti-clockwise sense, but we move round on a major arc of the circle. But if theta is obtuse, what happens is 
We start as usual from this point here, given by the complex number Z1. We move anti-clockwise around the circle, but do you notice it is now on what we call a minor arc, finishing at Z2. So the locus of Z is going to be something like this. OK? So in summary, we start at Z1, move anti-clockwise to Z2. And that movement is on the major arc if theta is acute, or it's on the minor arc if theta is obtuse. Now, I've got three examples here that you might like to try. And uh, each one of these reflects different ideas. So I would strongly encourage you to have a go at these or certainly look at my work solutions. So if you'd like to try, say, the first one, uh, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video, come back when ready, and we can check your solution. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So what we've got here is the arg of z minus 3 then all over the z plus 2i equals pi upon 4. Now that means when I check it out against the format up here, z1 is going to be at 3 on the real axis and z2 will be at minus 2 units on the imaginary axis. So if we draw up our axes, they're going to look something like this. This is going to be here 3 units on the real axis and this is going to be minus 2 on the imaginary axis. Now pi upon 4 is an acute angle so we're looking then at sketching the major arc for this circle. Starting at this point, OK, Z1, which is at 3, moving round anti-clockwise on a major arc of a circle to minus 2. So it's going to look something like this. And you could illustrate the chord going from minus 2 to 3 and the angle subtended from this chord to any point on this major arc round here. And this angle in here will be pi upon 4 radians. And z would be any complex number going out to any point then on the major arc. So just label that as z. Hope you can see that. OK, well, we've got this next one here, the arg of z plus 4 all over z minus 3i equaling pi upon 3 radians. So again, if you'd like to pause the video and give this a go now, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back. Let's see how you got on with this one. So again, checking this out with the format that we've got here, Z1 will be at negative 4, and Z2 will be at 3i. So if we sketch those axes, going to look something like this, where we've got negative 4 on the real axis, that's that point there, and on the imaginary axis we go up, three units, so that's that point there. And we've got pi upon three radians, again another acute angle, so we're going to be on a major arc. But this time we start from this point here, we've got to go anti-clockwise round the circle on a major arc starting at minus four, so it's going to be something like this. So if we sketch that in, you're going to get that, the major arc. And again, if we just mark from the chord the angle subtended on this arc, let's just say we go to there and back to the end there, then this angle subtended from the chord here on the arc is going to be pi upon 3 radians. OK? And the complex number z would be from here out to this point there. Okay, so that would be z. 
Now for this last one, we've got the arg of z minus 5i all over z minus 4 equaling 3 pi upon 4 radians. So give you a few moments just to pause the video if you'd like to have a go at this one. Okay, well let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, comparing this with the form that we've got here, z1 is at 5 on the imaginary axis, and for z2 we've got 4 units on the real axis. So if we draw our axes, then we can say that this is 5 on the imaginary axis and 4 units on the real axis. Now we start at 5 units on the imaginary axis and we move around in an anti-clockwise sense, round the circle, OK? But this time the angle here is obtuse. It's more than pi upon 2 radians. So that means that we're moving from 5 to 4 on the minor arc of the circle. So we're going to get something like this, OK? So, if we were to look at our chord going from 5 to 4 here, then let's say we take this point out to there and back to the 4. Then this angle in here is going to be 3 pi upon 4 radians. And z is going to be any point from here out to this minor arc here. So if we're going from here then to this point, okay, it's very small, I know, but that would be z. Okay, so I hope you had success with these sketches and that this tutorial has given you some insight into how we go about handling this particular locus.